Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss the uh, law of sines or the sine law. Basically, go over a basic proof of it. And I say basic because there's a, a more complex way of writing this law of sines, which includes the circumcircle, but I'll go over that in a later video. Basically, uh, yeah, and this is a more common way of writing the law of sines. Yeah, basically, given any triangle, the following relation holds and is called the law of sines or the sine law, which is sine of capital A over little a sine equals to sine of capital B over B, little b there equals sine of C, uh, capital C over the little c right here, where A, B, and C are basically the lengths of a triangle. So there's A, there's B, there's C and capital A, B, and C are the corresponding um, opposite angles. So for example, if this is uh, little a right here, the length, the opposite angle is just this a right here. And similarly for B and C. And now the proof of this, well, we will uh, utilize the fact that we know that the area of a triangle equals two, one half times base times height. And you can see proof of this in a video link below in my earlier video. Yeah, so if I move this triangle over here, basically we can write the area in different ways depending on which base that we choose. So for example, if we chose the base in the, as this A right here, so the height is gonna be, well, we could make the height here where it's perpendicular across. So basically this height we'll call this H1. So the area in this case is gonna be one half times by A, which is the base times by height one or h one. And now we know that, well, if we take the sine of this angle right here, sine of B, this equals to opposite, which is h one is a right angle triangle right here, over hypotenuse, which is C. So h one will just equal to, well, sine B times C. So this here would equal to one half times by A times by h one, which is gonna be C sine capital B. Yeah, but uh, let's say, yes, yeah, so that's if we chose A as the base, but now we could write the area in a, in a different way if we chose a different one. In this case, let's choose B as the base. So if we have the B as the base, and here this angle A is greater than uh, 90 degrees, so we would actually just extend this out. So what we could do is draw a dashed line, a perpendicular line to get the height. So there is a perpendicular line, and we'll call this height H2. So the area in this case will just be equal to uh, 1 half, and these are the same areas, we just chose a different base. So we have A, so one, 1 over 2 times the by base, which is B, now times by the height, which is H2. And now in this case, we could consider this overall triangle to get in with this angle C, and then we can get basically sine of C equals two opposite, which is H2, over hypotenuse. In this case, it's gonna be A right here. So we have A. And now, so we can rewrite H2 is equal to, well, A times sine of C. Just move this over there. This would equal now one half times it by B, times it by A, times it by sine of C. And now we're gonna basically write area in a different way now to include the base C. So we'll write it as base C. Now this one's gonna be a bit uh, trickier. Again, this angle A in this case is greater than 90 degrees. So we would draw a perpendicular line across like this from this side, just so it connects. So this is perpendicular. There's a right angle right there. So now our height would be H3. So basically, area now is equal to one half times by C, which is the base, times it by H3, which is our new height of the triangle. And now in this case, we could do similar to this method and use B, like we could do sine of B in this case, uh, because we have this H3 and A, but that in this case, we'll be still stuck with this B uh, angle, which we already covered, and we also are, are dealing with this hypotenuse of yeah, of A, which we already uh, had in this case here. So basically, uh, to, to yeah, so we need a new way of writing it that includes this angle A, because we haven't included that in any, any of these areas, because we need this for the proof. But what we could do is 
you calculate this angle right here. So this angle, this is just because, well, we know that uh, this is 180 de degrees across. That's just going to be 180 minus the this area here. So basically the full uh, angle from from here to here is going to be 180. So we subtract by A. So subtract by A. So that's this angle. This is in degrees, but we could also write it in a in a more mathematical way in writing radians. So 180 is equal to pi. So pi radians minus A. So basically 180 degrees minus A equals pi radians minus A. And that's what we're accustomed to in math. So we'll just stick with this. So now what we could do is write the sine of this angle. So we'll bring this over here. So sine of pi minus A is equal to, well, there's opposite. And there's hypotenuse, which is B. So H3 over B. And now uh, what this also equals, like I showed in my earlier video, this equals to sine of A. This is a trig identity. So basically, yeah, basically you can see the proof of this in my earlier video. And uh, I did this, uh, yeah, I did this pretty recently. So basically, if you see that, we get this right here. So this just equals to sine of A. So now we're dealing with sine of a as opposed to pi minus a. So now this h3 or this height 3 is equal to b times sine of a, just moving it around. So this equals to 1 half times by c times by b times by sine of a. Yeah, and now what we could do is put these three angles together because we have the uh, all, uh, all the angles here, a, b, and c. So a, b, and c, put all these areas together. So we get area is equal to 1 half. Let's go over from the beginning one. That's this. So AC sine B. AC sine B. And now when we scroll over to the middle one, we have uh, BA sine C. So equals to 1 half times BA sine C. And now the last one that's over here, CBA. So one half CB and then sine of A right here. And now as you can see what what these, yeah, we have a lot of like terms here. So what we could do is multiply uh, basically everything by uh, two, yeah, put this here, multiply everything by two divided by A, B, C. So we multiply this on on all sides. So what we get here is basically we'll have it as 2 over A, B, C on this left side. That's equal to, well, there's an A, C, sine B, and divided by 2. So what happens is the 2's cancel, the A's cancel, and the C's cancel. We'll be left with sine B over B. And similarly, on this side, there's an, there's an A, B, and a, and a 1 over 2. The twos cancel and the ABs cancel. We're so we're, in this case, we're left with C. So this would just be sine C over C. And similarly, on this side, the C and B and twos disappear, leaving us with a A. So we have a sine A over A. And this is basically our law, uh, our sine law. So law of sines, or or sine law or law of sines. Basically, yeah. So there's the proof of it and all we did was using the area of a triangle so hopefully you'll learn from this video uh, anyways that is all for today like always you can download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution